Thank you. And the deputy Read together with the Honorable President of the NCOP. Honorable President, please take your seat. Mr. Zuma, please leave, Baba. Please leave. You don't belong here. At arms to please escort Honorable Malema out of the house. We must leave the house. Honorable Malema. <laughs> yeah. We see honorable members using their heads to harm others. She's just saying fuck off. Out, 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 of dead people to come back. My man of We are using dead people to come back. Dead of dead people for politics. We are using the name of dead people for politics. You are very cheap. You are very cheap. So guys, this is what we normally see when we watch Parliament. We know that our Parliament is filled with chaos. The people that are there to supposedly represent the people that have voted for them. This is what they normally do. But as a taxpayer, do you sometimes sit back and ask yourself, how much are we paying these people? And is that money worth it? How much are we actually paying these people to go to parliament to cause chaos and not to work for the people of this country? Because with the money and the perks that these people are getting, can South Africans on the ground actually say that this money is probably worth it? How many people can say that the money that parliamentarians are getting, the perks that these people are getting is probably worth it. You know, guys, recently there was a report that came out. And this report actually said that the money that parliamentarians are earning is going to be increased. Can you believe it? These people, instead of their money being cut by half because they are doing practically nothing for the people of this country, the South African government is actually going to increase these people's money. So do you wonder how much are we actually going to pay these people? from this year going forward so i was lucky to watch this video from my brother mighty jamie and he actually broke it down how parliamentarians are actually going to be paid from this year going forward i want you to tell me if you think this money is worth it or not today let's talk about members of parliament how much do you think members of parliament earn do you think it's actually a good career you know, let, let's look at the composition of the, the parliament that's going in before we talk about the numbers and think about, you know, what it means for representation, because representation is a big part of the job of a member of parliament. There are 400 seats in parliament, and I'm talking about the National Assembly here, but I'm just going to call it parliament, right? 321 of the members of parliament going in are over the age of 40. That's 80% of them. Yeah. 101 members of parliament 25 percent are over the age of 60 right and we've got a few over the age of 70 as well and then you've got 50 percent of parliament 
which is over the age of 50, 50%. I think this has a bearing on the quality of representation because you're supposed to be able to articulate the needs, the problems of the people who you represent and to be able to then use policy, oversight, et cetera, to alleviate those needs, either by changing the rules, et cetera. The median age in South Africa is 28. Hmm? Between the ages of 25 to 35, the unemployment rate is 49% on the expanded definition. Between the ages of 15 to 25, the unemployment rate there is 70%. The challenges that are being faced by South Africans in the 15 to 25 bracket and the 25 to 35 bracket are significant. They require understanding and they're different, right? From whatever was being experienced 25 years ago, for example, in the year 1999, when half of the parliament was 25. It's totally different, totally different. And I wonder if they have a, a, an understanding on or have a capacity to be able to articulate those problems, those needs, considering the fact that they are not necessarily going to be in direct contact with those. Add the fact that those who have been senior politicians for a very long time also don't have an understanding of the financial challenges that many South Africans are facing on a day-to-day -day basis. So yeah, that's it. Uh, something interesting though, we've got um, 12 members of parliament between the ages of 20 to 29. So they'll possibly be able to represent those issues. 30 to 39, you've got 67 members, but under 25% of parliament is under the age of 40. I don't know. I don't know if you think that's a good thing. So let's starting with going to salaries now, because that's, that's why you, you're watching the salaries. Yes. MPs who are heading to parliament are going to be earning 1.27 million a year. So guys, and the deputy president is going to earn 3 million rands per annum. So which means monthly, this, people are, this person is going to get 263,000 minister. 2.6 million monthly is 224,000 speaker. It's 3 million per annum, 3.1 million per annum. And monthly is 263,666 rents per month and the leader of the opposition i think this one is going to be john stain he's going to get 1.7 million per annum and monthly is 145,666 what do you think about these salaries man and the fact that the taxpayers you guys are the ones that are paying for these salaries are you happy to see that these people are getting this kind of money and and is this money worth it i i, I guess this is exactly what i want to hear from you guys is it worth it for you to pay this much, to pay these people this much? Are we getting our money's worth? Or over 100,000 a month. And this is gross salary. So it will come down with taxes. It will come down with a lot of the payments that you have to make. But also, maybe, maybe you didn't know this, but many political parties also make members of parliament pay a contribution to the party, right? For uh, party funding, so to speak. So if you even if you get 80, right, they're still going to come around and take maybe uh, 10 from that. And so we have the leader of the opposition that is going to get 1.7 million and monthly is 145,000. Minority leader is 1.5 million. Monthly is 125,000. Committee chair is 1.6 million. Monthly is 139,000. And a member of parliament is going to get 1.2 million. And monthly is 105,000. This is how much you people are paying the members of parliament. And um, use that to fund party, um, you know, office work, etc., etc. So when you see uh, members of parliament, don't just think that all of the money is going to them. In fact, a lot of that money is, is, is actually going to go back to the party in and of itself, right? But there are some perks. There are some perks. Even at the basic level of being a member of parliament, some of the perks include... 88 domestic flights per year. So domestic journeys, but both of them are by flights. 88 per year, either by air, train, bus or vehicle. Transport to and from South African airports. Parking at South African airports. Transport of dependents. Relocation costs. Tools of trade. <laughs> so when you get into parliament, they'll give you the latest iPhone. They'll give you an iPad, etc. I've seen this before with some of the people that I know who are members of parliament. They have gadgets. So you'll get tools of trade. And then they'll get uh, airtime. They have these massive, massive data 
uh, accounts and airtime accounts because they need to call people. They need to be able to access the internet. Equipment, furniture, stationery for MPs' offices, which are inside the National Assembly. Um, I think the part of Parliament that burned down doesn't include the offices, so those should still be functional. So they get equipment, furniture, stationery. They get personal accident insurance, and then they get accommodation at the parliamentary villages in Cape Town. I've been to one of these parliamentary villages. Let me say, you know, it sounds like it's a lot, but some of them are very, very basic. It's basically... Um, it's a kitchen, it's a sitting room, and it's two bedrooms. And the bathroom has that bathroom situation where the toilet is in its own room and you close the door, and then the bath is in its own room and then you close the door. And they provide the furnishings for that. So um, the second bedroom has two single beds. The main bedroom has one bed. And that, that's where most of the people are staying. Some of the parliamentary villages are very nice. Most of them are those kind of like four-room structures. So don't think that parliamentarians are living in two-story houses or anything like that. Most of the time, they're living in this very basic accommodation. But it's still much better than an ordinary South Africans, man. They're still living better than ordinary South Africans. You take the salary, you take the perks. And the fact that these people are given such nice accommodations, man. I, I wouldn't mind being a member of parliament. <laughs> I don't know the lie. I wouldn't mind being a member of parliament, man. Can you just imagine, man, just go into parliament and to say, um, what is this thing that they love? Um, uh, on a point of order, on a point of order, uh, 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 this person is talking nonsense. No, no, honorable Maba, so please withdraw that. I withdraw that. And month end, you get over 100,000 rands. And you get all of these packs, man. I wouldn't mind being a member of parliament. I wish a political party can actually call me and say, Thomas, can you please come and be our member of parliament? Guys, I would drop this channel today. <laughs> I would drop this channel today. These people are living nice. These people are living nice, man. On taxpayers' expense, they are living nice. They are living nice. <clears throat> so they get... Daily transport to and from the villages to parliament, okay? So that's that's basically the parliamentary package. What do you think? Do you think it's a good package, bad package? Let me know in the comments. Let's have a conversation. But I mean, like, can't these people get their own accommodation with this kind of money that these people have been paid? Can they get their own accommodation? Can they arrange their, their, their own traveling? Uh, can they make their own traveling arrangements? Why does South Africans have to pay for everything, man? They are, they, we are even paying for these people to have airtime, to have data, to... <laughs> All of these things, these people can pay for them themselves. What is it exactly are they doing with their money then? If South Africans are going to pay for these people to have everything, what is it are they doing with their own money? What is it are they doing with their own money? But obviously MP, that's the lowest level of being in... Uh, the National Assembly. There are other levels. So let's go back to the top. The Deputy President earns 3.164 million a year, which is about 260,000 a month. Ministers earn 2.69 Deputy Ministers a, a year, 2.69 million a year. Deputy Ministers earn... And these people are still getting the money from their own political parties, I suppose. So if you're going to take a Deputy President, yeah, it's Paul Machatile. Paul Machatile is going to get like... 3 million rands from parliament per, and, and, and it's 260, 263,000 rand per month. How much is the ANC paying this person? <laughs> How much is the ANC paying this person? So these people are getting money from the National Assembly and they're also getting the money from their own political parties and they're also getting the money from their own tenders on the side. <laughs> man, being a politician is nice, man. Being a politician is nice. No wonder that boy from the ANC, boy Mama Bolo, was crying so much when the ANC actually put his name down there. Man. I, I, no wonder this guy was taking ANC to court and saying that the ANC, I demand the ANC put my name up on the list. I want to go to parliament. This is the only way I can survive. This is the only thing that I know. I know politics. I've been a member of parliament for years. And it's unacceptable for the ANC to remove my name. I demand the ANC to take my name and put it up there. <laughs> Do you blame him? I don't blame him. 
I wouldn't blame him. If I was a member of parliament and my political party says that Thomas, your name is down there, man, I, man, I would cause chaos. I'm telling you, I would cause chaos. I would cause chaos with all these packs. I would cause chaos. <laughs> 2.2 million a year and that translates to 240,000 per month that's a lot and 183,000 a month uh Ramaphosa's annual salary is over 4 million so that's what ministers deputy ministers are making what about the other officials the head of a minority party is making 1.5 million a year right uh, that's also a significant amount of money if you think about it the chairs of committees right the different committees that are in parliament right what you see there they make 1.675 million a year then you go to uh premiers in case you're wondering how much premiers make 2.53 million a year and then members of the provincial legislatures right they make 1.23 million a year mm. so that's mm. a lot of money mm. that's a lot of money mm. i think in my opinion right um not in your opinion, man. It's a lot of money. I'm telling you, it's a lot of money. Where does this place them in the in in the rankings of South African income? In the top one percent, comfortably in the top one percent, right? If any, if you are making any of these numbers, you are in the top one percent of South Africa, right? So before we 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 just break down some of these elements, let's go back to what is the role of a member of parliament. A member of parliament has basically got six roles, right? One, legislation, and this is drafting, debating, passing of laws, right, at the various stages. Representation, the, the MPs are supposed to talk about the interests of the people, advocate for the interests of the people, find ways to put the agenda of the people into the parliamentary agenda, into the executive agenda, right? So they're supposed to speak to, speak for, uh, speak, speak to the issues of the people, speak for the people. Right. Oh, and guys, how many times have you heard the members of parliament actually speaking on the issues that are affecting the people on the ground? Because it's like when these people get to parliament, they only discuss what they want to discuss. They only get to parliament so that they can settle their own scores. When was the last time you heard the members of parliament actually speaking about what the people need? When was the last time? Oversight, and this oversight is oversight of the executive, right? We have this system called separation of powers. And under separation of powers, you have three different arms of government. You've got the executive, you've got the legislature, then you've got the judiciary, right? So the executive is supposed to be the administration, that they, they roll out the agenda of that particular, you know, uh, government. But then the legislature makes the laws and oversees that. So the president and ministers have to account to parliament right so that's oversight and then the judiciary deals with issues of of, of dispute uh, issues of legal interpretation that kind of thing that's what the role of the of the judiciary is in that particular instance so oversight is important budget approval is another one of the roles of a member of parliament and then uh committee participation a lot of the work of parliament happens in committees right mps often serve in parliamentary committees such as finance health um scopa you've heard about all of these committees and these committees are basically the first office for everything that happens so legislation oversight it all goes to committee so depending on where and what committee you are placed on that can also give you an indication of how important a member of parliament is right and if you're trying to hold mps accountable actually figure out what committees they sit on you know one of the big movements that occurred um in the last 10 years was the fees must fall movement right under the fees must fall movement we saw students fighting for access to higher education talking about the middle missing middle which was not being adequately funded and what happened was actually one of the leaders of fees must fall nompendulo mukachwa was actually appointed to be chairperson of the higher education committee the portfolio on higher education and some members of fees must fall were actually in that committee so students are still complaining about the cost of, uh, you know, um, higher education and access to higher education. <laughs> We've seen issues with NSFAS and all of that. So then there are legitimate questions, I think, that have to be asked to the committee chairperson, the members who, of that committee as to what did they actually achieve in the sixth administration? So you need to know that. You need to get informed. One of the things I'm looking forward to is to try to bring all of these elements closer to you through this channel so that we can keep an eye on everything uh, and actually be able to track 
the performance of the seventh administration conversate about the performance of the seventh administration. It is going to be one of the most complicated administration because of these dynamics of government of national unity and all of that. And the way to Im to to really enrich our understanding and to play a role is to have people, I think, who are watching these kind of things as much as possible and coming back to you and telling you, hey, this is what's happening, just in case you don't have time to follow ah. this stuff. This is what the channel is for. By the way, guys, 90% of the people um, who are watching these videos have not subscribed to the channel. Anyway, guys, what do, you, what do you think about that, man? What do you think about the money that the members of parliament are getting? Do you think that... It's too much. Do you think that? It, because me personally, I don't want to lie. I think the money should be cut in half. <laughs> if I was making the call, I would actually cut the money in half. Because I don't see the need for these people that are representing South Africans, these people that are representing the poor to be paid so much. I don't see the need. And we don't even see the results of South Africans actually paying these people so much. You know, if the, these members of parliament were actually doing something for South Africans, if these people were actually working for South Africans, if South Africans on the ground can actually say that our lives are getting better because of the of the of the of the of the, of the legislations that are being passed in parliament, our lives are, are are better today because the people that we have elected are there in parliament and they are speaking on our behalf. The issues that we have been complaining about, they are being attended to. I would actually not mind these people getting this kind of money. But you look at how South Africa is, you look at the fact that things are getting worse in the country. Things keep getting worse in the country. But for some reason, South Africans will have to pay for these people to live an opulent lifestyle while the people on the ground are suffering. So me personally, guys, I would actually cut the salaries in half. I would cut the salaries in half. I honestly don't see the need for us to continue paying these people to have this kind of, of money and to have this kind of perks. What is it exactly are these people doing with their own money? Because South Africans are earning a salary, and on that salary, South Africans are paying for everything themselves. So what was the point of paying someone over 1 million rand per year? And at the same time, you continue paying for these people to have the perks. They can't even travel to parliament, to, to parliament on their own. They cannot even get their own accommodation on their own. They cannot do that on their own. What is it exactly? What is it exactly? Me, I would, like guys, me personally, I would cut the salaries in half. I know some people would say that, Thomas, man, that's totally being unfair, but uh, I don't want to lie. I wouldn't mind these people getting this kind of money if people's lives were actually being improved. That one, I wouldn't mind. But the fact that the things keeps getting worse for the people on the ground, <laughs> this is the reason why. I want these people's money to be cut by half. Guys, I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Please tell me what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button. And the most important part, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabal. So I will see you next time. Bye-bye.